Hello! Welcome back to the Blood Bowl recap for Div 5 B and C. This, I am Chaos Blue! The nice, very energetic host, and I'm Gengar, the very sick host of the day. And we with us today... Guest. Hi, I'm Mick Mackey. I'm in uh, Division 5C. Nose Dice is not with us because he is also sick today. Um... <laughs> Uh, yeah. Sorry for the coughing and all of the, like, snorting people, but at least I'm here. Cough. Mm -hmm. cough. <laughs> anyway, McMackey is the coach of 5C, which is playing the Camry team, uh, I think. Uh, I believe it's... Yep. Call again. Can uh, we do it? Yes, we can. Yep. Which we covered in week one, I believe. Yeah, uh, but uh, the amazing tale is, is uh, like it's a relatively fresh community, which is just sitting at four wins and zero losses. Yeah, I think Kemri. I think Kemri can be a team that doesn't lose, depending on uh, positioning. That's the thing is, Kemri is a team that, with good positioning, you should be able to set up a very good defense. Uh, but with poor def poor positioning, you will get uh, or you tend to get shredded just because it's so hard to correct your mistakes with agility to across the board and slow you, movement. You might even say, Kepri, do it. Yes, we can. <laughs> anyway, uh, on that note, we will jump straight into Div 5B. Um, uh, B. Yep, B first, as usual. <clears throat> uh, so, the first uh, game we're covering is, uh, that's actually an admin game, Large Skull versus Really Famous Medics. For some reason, 5B has twice as many AI teams as it should, so they're actually starting to cycle, and it's really weird, but it's happening. So, if you don't recognize some of the, the AI team names, that is what's going on there. Similarly, the second game, Immortal Kings versus <laughs> Valorous Paladins, is AI versus this... AI. Just look at the stats of this game. It's amazing. Uh, which game? Of the Ooh, AI game. Only the two Kings armor breaks by relevance. the Kemri team. I have to say, they were not very good at hitting. Yeah. And only five blocks. Ugh. <laughs> 16 oh, so blocks it, for the ninth, though. So it actually did play out the game, then. I was wondering if it would. Uh... <laughs> that I is... don't know how well they played it out. That is, um, that is terrific. But it seems there are technically stats so well i there's guess that i guess the ai knows how to stall against the ai where you just don't move and then the ai doesn't move yep to that there's no <laughs> replay for this game i would have loved to seen this that would have been <laughs> terrific oh well though uh so the first real game we're looking at is the pantheon passers versus the heroes of the sword coast which was won Finally. by the passers three to zero yeah yeah i do not care Finally. <laughs> King of the Cosmos is getting a break, and his team is not getting shredded left and right. To be fair, he is playing against a pro-elf team, which are generally more concerned with scoring than hurting the other team. Yeah, I mean, you say that, but the pros got more armor breaks than the vampires did. Yeah, this vampire team has had a very rocky existence. Like, holy damn, they got rocked. And a lot. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I, I have think to say, the vampires already like seven dead trolls. The, the team is just shreds. I do have respect for anyone who's going to play stunties or uh, vampires in a league setting, just because I don't know if I'd be able to stand the frustration of having to play a team that can just go tits up that fast <laughs> for thirteen games in a row. <laughs> it, it takes a special kind of kind of person to be able to pl play stunty. But the rewards are tremendous. <laughs> indeed, indeed. Uh, so yeah, not... Other than the big win for the elves, uh, in terms of results from this game, not really that exciting. No one got seriously injured, and there was no special level ups afterwards. It was just solid play on the part of the elves, and typical play on the part of vampires, where they seemingly self-destructed. game... I think this is the first game for the vampires where they have a positive feedback in SPP. Mm hmm. Yeah, indeed. That's a plus. They earned, They've got a whole, they earned a whole seven, seven points. And they inflicted like five KOs, so you know. Well, they did have Armor one, like, seven. Mm hmm. 
that anyway. Yeah. Moving good good game for the elves, though. They got uh, quite a bit of SVP. Let's see, that's uh, 7, yeah, 16, the 21. Are, and the Bantian presses are having a really good season here. 21. Wow, actually, yeah, that, that is a lot. Uh, anyway, uh, let's move on to the next game, which is Organized Crime versus the Cowboy Dwarfs. Dwarfs win. Surpr I not... think coming as not no great surprise. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately for Ogres, um, not a great matchup. Not that Ogres have lots of matchups that could be even considered good or favorable. But hmm. the fact that dwarves have armor nine and block means they don't mind just red dying ogres if things <laughs> if they have to, and they just mutilate snotlings. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is the thing though. You would say that, but the ogres only have five armor breaks, which I think is little, and the dwarves only got eleven armor breaks. So what the hell have they been doing this game? I have to assume hitting ogres because uh... oh no. The ogres only got 24 blocks and the dwarves only got 40 blocks. That's like so little for them. Yeah, so uh, what I expect happened was um, uh, that the cowboy dwarves were just pushing the ogres off and preventing them from getting blocks. Well, uh, also, also, this is uh, Spigasaurus' team, so they might have gotten several injuries on Stoutlings early. Then all they would have had left to hit is ogres. Yeah, so there were uh, four KOs and three cas or three casualties inflicted by the dwarfs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's also um, because Sotus doesn't carry any stoplings in his team. If you go look at his team, it's just six ogres, that's it. And uh, so what... the Kepotors did manage to level up both of their runners this game as well. They, t they took some interesting skill choices, but they were normals. Let's see, what do those look like? So we got a... A wrestle runner and a fend runner. Yep. Uh, I don't dislike either of those choices. You don't see a whole lot of wrestle runners, to be fair. I have um, a wrestle runner. <laughs> yeah, it's not it's not super typical, but I do understand the reasoning behind it. Where you're a dwarf Actually, team, you're slow. Yeah. The way you lose was a lot of the time is if someone just potatoes downfield and you don't have someone who can take them down. I think actually having two wrestle runners is not a bad idea simply because of potatoes. I like to build my runners mm. as Sacrosol and Gerius. Well, if you're assuming that no one will block your runner, then it's not a bad idea. Um, but having so the. A good, a good dwarven runner that sits in the cage. So. Mm -hmm. Unless you That's play true. like me, where you just never cage. But, uh... Ideal <laughs> Ideally, dwarves are always in the cage, but the thing is, is that in the games where it really matters, your uh, runner might get blocked. That's that's the thing. Where in the games where <laughs> everything goes according to plan, it doesn't really matter what skills your runner has in the first place yeah. because your runner's not doing anything really besides carrying the ball safely. But in close games, the ones where you can end up actually end up losing or end up drawing, having block will prevent the ball from going on the ground. This is why one, one is also the bad idea because it's having one carrier and one second now. And it's good that he's having Fend as a second skill in the front, so, you know, if they punch him, they can't follow up. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like, Fend is a, pr is a pretty good choice on a Dwarf Runner if you want to dedicate him to holding the ball. Friendly is a very underrated skill, especially mm -hmm. with all these Chaos teams and Nurgle teams coming into the fray. Mm-hmm. Uh, anyway, uh, our next team, or rather teams, are... Your lizard Airy versus Lich's Skull Crushers, and the lizards won two to zero against the Chaos Dwarves here. Lizards also have not lost a season, but they did lose their Croxico. Oh yeah, Godzilla died. Yeah, the, that's uh... the, the lizards may have won this game, but it was a pyrrhic victory. Their Crocs died, who then got MVP, and Asaurus also died. Uh, yeah, he won't. Ouch. Also worth mentioning, it's not shown here. But uh, the the uh, Chaos did hire Mad Eye, the four strength, uh, three agility, Hail Mary Pass, guy. Hail Mary Pass Chaos Dwarf. Yeah. Uh, the Crocs God also was a Bloxy God, so that's dead Bloxy mm -hmm. God. And it doesn't look like uh, Sakari has the cash to replace both the Crocs and the Source this game. No. I... What do you guys? What do you think he's gonna pick up? Um, I don't think he's replaced either yet, but uh, if he can afford it, I would get the Crocs first. 
Yeah, he's got 160k in the bank right now, so... A, I think a developed source is better is usually better than a developed Crocs, because, just because the Crocs needs doubles. But a <laughs> rookie Crocs is often better than a rookie Saurus. Let's see. Who does? What's his next match? Uh, large a... school. Oh, okay. Well, his next matchup's a buy, so he'll probably have enough uh, cash okay. to replace both by the time he plays. Yeah, a real that might player. do it. And honestly, if it is a buy, then I think that's a more argument towards getting the Crocs if he can afford it. I'd rather mm. get SPP on a Crocs than a Saurus from a... Well, then again. I would I don't know. actually I, I want a lot disagree of there. I would actually disagree there because the thing that you have at lower... When you're starting Lizards, the problem that you have is your team itself isn't super reliable. You want to get block on your Saurus. Mm. Um, you want to get them leveled. You want to be able to not have to live and die on the 1 or 9 like you do at 1000 TV. And allowing a source to... Although he already does have two block source, so it's not as big of a deal. But the more source you can develop, the less you have to rely on not getting bad dice. Yeah, and normally you would also look at, like, who's my next enemy. If it were, like, an elephant with 87, I might go for the uh, Croxicorn, but I might be low. Mm -hmm. But apparently his next opponent is the um, Necromantic, so the mighty blow is not very good for that. Both good points. Um, let's just, uh, so... Lich also got a lot of SPP in this game as well, but uh, I'm going to talk about that later on, I think. Hint, hint. <coughs> uh, our next match is the High Fivers versus You Worship Chaos, which is a draw between them, 1 1 apiece. Huh. Uh, looks like the Agi 4 werewolf got MVP, because of course it did, because it's a werewolf. Oh, oh, yeah, actually, it got Mighty Blow off of that MVP. Lots of, uh,. Lots of casualties that game. Lots of blocking mm -hmm. that game. Not too so many got... permanent injuries, though. The Norse yeah. don't have a block mighty blow yet, now, which is also a fun thing to have. Mm -hmm. Yeah, high that's, fivers. That, that's something. High fivers were slightly out out blocked. Uh, Forty eight versus sixty one, with mm -hmm. four casualties versus the five. Only, um, only permanent injury is a dead zombie, which I don't think Uber is gonna cry over too much. Uh, but there are three players on the Worship Chaos who were missed next game. So whoever wh whoever Norse's next opponent is, is probably going to be happy about that. And this is the thing about Norse, though. I think Norse usually outblock most races. Very so true. Because people are um, going to base them up quicker because they're AV7. But they're also going to apply 12 tactics because they can block. So they, you know, automatically, by nature, get more blocks. Very true. All right, let's see what the next one looks like. Okay, yeah, let's do that. Last team of the division. Or a game. Game. Hufflepuff Heroes versus Rottenham Rotters. The, and the Nurgle won 1-0. One, one uh, All right. So, so this looks like, uh, a, looks like a pretty typical game for these teams, actually. <laughs> Armor breaks are a little low. Actually, I say that, but the blocks are pretty low for Nurgle versus Kepri, I think. I I would and say that they were playing quite defensive. Say, normally you would say that the, the game may have a slight advantage, but this Nurgle team actually, I think, brought the challenge to them because they are the guards and a strength 5 warriors. Mm -hmm. Yeah, at low TV, undeveloped, I would say that Nurgles are definitely the favorite. Um, let me. What does uh, this? Nurgle this Nurgle team, team, though, is actually quite developed for this. Uh, mm. This early on, it's got the guard on the Brace Beast of Nurgle, the Strength Five Warrior, two block warriors, and one which has Mighty Blow, and uh, that team is actually. You're going to be quite good at pushing off the uh, Kemri if they decide to face the Supreme Guardians. Oh, bless you. Thank uh -huh. you. And they've got their three rerolls, which Nurgle... Mm -hmm. Starting two rerolls as Nurgle. The starting typical build with two rerolls as Nurgle. Uh, um, there's one they tend to suffer when they start getting based heavily. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, there's one expulsion the apiece. Buff. The death on the Hufflepuff the... heroes was a guard skeleton, so that sort of sucks to lose. Uh, yeah, at... The Hufflepuff heroes, they have a stringed up skeleton. How do you feel about that? Uh, I, I don't know if I would take it this early on in development. Like, later on, once you've got your core skills, I really like it. But this early on, especially against undeveloped teams as Kemri, if you're doing well, you're going to be getting more and more skills. And you don't want to be giving up wizards until you have to. Until you have the skills that you can deal with the wizard. Until you have the um, players that you can remove players um, easily. What? And this team, while it's got some great development on the Tomb Guardians, it's got three Mighty Blue on the Tomb Guardians. The Blitzfraws, I'm not seeing any development besides one MVP. Which... I personally really like rushing for getting those split straws to be killers so that they can start generating TV on their own or SPP on their own. You know, you do uh, say that, but I don't think they're giving enough. up too many wizards at this rate. Yeah, I Very am true. one of the higher Gimli teams in just the value right now. And I can tell you in the, vision, in the division where I'm sitting right now, I actually am usually the one getting the wizards. <laughs> Mind you, or no, you have a strength um, Tomb Guardian, don't you? I got a strength of Blitz and a strength of Tomb Guardian. Mm -hmm. and... and the Blitzer, I 100% agree with getting a Blitzer strength up because he's going to be doing your blitzing and you changing the uh, Blitz from needing an assist to not is huge. And honestly, mm -hmm. I think strength up on Kepri Guardian. in particular is a huge deal because Ke one of Kepri's few strengths a few advantages over other teams is that they can usually outstrength people with their four Tomb Guardians. Yeah. So just more mm -hmm. strength the, on top of that just lets them compound it. The Tomb Guardians just because I want to get break that clone in so I can gauge dive on two pluses. Three pluses. That will be, uh... No. Uh, so yeah. Uh, yeah. on that note, uh, let's look at the, uh, our teams recovering for this division. I will go first since I am healthy and, <laughs> and prepared <laughs> for a change. So uh, the team I'm going to look at, as I hinted earlier, was is Lich's Skull Crushers. Skulls. We take them, we break them, and we stomp them. Nice motto. <laughs> So, he is already doing something very interesting, and that's instead of going for the usual break tackle block, he actually went mighty blow on block. That is how do you? That is exactly what stood out to me as well with bolt with both bull centaurs as well. So he's really committing to having murder bulls, uh, possibly at the expense of mobility even. Well, he's probably going to play hobgoblin ball then instead of the ball. I mean, you say that, but he only has he's only scored twice on his hobgoblins, at least his living ones. So that suggests to me that at least some of his scoring has still been from the bull centaurs. Yeah, it looks like about uh so he's got three touchdowns on one of them, and uh let's see. Two on the other. Those those MVPs have been pretty nice. Um but I don't know how much I like the <sighs> Two Mighty Blow Bull Centers. Um, I I can see getting Mighty Blow Bull Center eventually. Um, because you want to be able to blitz with the Bull Center. You've got the six movement, the sprint sure feet. If you're naturally you're gonna be blitzing with him more often, um, because you've got that movement. Mm -hmm. That being said, you can't really take advantage of the mobility if you have to make a four up dodge. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What... Needs so for at least one possible. of them, I would have preferred break tackle. Mm -hmm. um, that being said, I don't dislike um, the mighty blow. I'm uh, I'm personally a fan of going block break tackle for both centaurs right away, but I definitely agree that I think it's an interesting and valid choice to go mighty blow on one of them before break tackle. I do think two mighty blow is pushing it a little bit. Mind you, I'm also a fan of. Um, turning one bulk centaur into a dedicated carrier and the other one into a, well, a blitzer, really. Yeah, the uh, thing... Not everyone agrees <clears throat> on that, though. So, the problem I have with both of the bull centaurs being mighty blow is that 
at least the way I've seen Chorfs often played, is that one of them is kept in reserve as a safety and is kept back there, on defense at least, is kept back there in case something happens where the slower um, blockers are bypassed, in which case then the ball center charges in and can potentially shut down a runner or potato, potato play, anything like that. Um, but that being said, if he's a safety, he's not generally hitting someone once a turn. Mm -hmm. So you're not able to take advantage of both Mighty Blows. But then again, Mighty Blow, the more Mighty Blow you have, the more in injuries you cause, the more removals you cause. So The other thing worth considering, uh, it's been my experience at least, usually when as a Chaos Dwarf d team develops more, did it, what did I just say? Chaos Dwarf? Whatever. <laughs> um, usually as ca dw Chaos Dwarves develop more, and you get Claw on more of your blockers, Usually those claw guys start eating up more of your bl your blitzes. So on a developed Chaos Dwarf team, you really don't need two dedicated blitzing bull centaurs because you want to blitz with your claw because that's what actually kills people. I will uh, say and on that topic, actually... Um, I will say one oh. positive thing about having Mighty Blow early, though. Generally, when you uh, want to develop people, you get Mighty Blow early, you don't get it as a last skill. So getting it early is going to help through the development. So for the long game, this is all the better idea. Very true. Yeah, you're not wrong. Uh, last thing worth mentioning, though, it looks like he's going block first on his blockers. We'll, I guess we'll see if he does this with the third one as well. Um, I don't dislike this decision, but I would like to see him starting to alternate with his future level ups uh, unless, unless he rolls claw I guess um, I think really... I personally actually do like taking guard on at least the first few dwarf blockers just because this team doesn't have a whole lot more strength than a lot of other bash teams it's got two bull centaurs, two four, four strength players which are your strength and you've got block all, and you've got six mm -hmm. blockers it, they've got block. Seems... That's great. It allows you to take uh, dice a little bit. It allows you to uh, take block in the short dice term, a little bit more. The, in the short term, I can tell you as laws, mm -hmm. but nobody takes the mino because of the mino. Mm -hmm. uh, oh yeah. The... It, in the short term, taking guard first is a good idea. It does help you be stronger in a short span of time. But in the lo long term, for your development, taking splitting mighty blow. And guard is better, both because it helps you develop faster, and because you don't really want your claw on guard players. You want it. You want at least one chaos dwarf who is dedicated to just clawing every the face off of everything. You know. And oh, very true. That that sort of player is not suited to standing around guarding as well. At least not at the, the lower levels. Um, but I think it, I will be interested to see how he's developing. If for no other reason, then because he's definitely doing some very interesting things with these bull centaurs. I don't know. I just find that having a few guard at low TV will win you more games than having multiple mighty blow in for most teams. Mm -hmm. You're not you're not wrong, but you need to balance that with long term progression as well. I have a very simple uh, rule of thumb, which is if your player who levels up is like 9 or 10 out of 16 SPP, I am more tempted to give a mighty blow, and if he's like 6 out of 6 SPP, I am more tempted to give him out. Because if he's high up in SPP anyway, it's not going to take much time to get to that out anyway. Seems reasonable. Yeah, good, good rule of thumb. Okay, uh, I think... I think we're about done with uh, the Chaos Dwarves. So, uh, what what team did you want to cover, Gengar? I was going to cover the Rottingham Rockers. A Nurgle team which is very fitting to my stage right now. I feel like I'm blessed by Papa Nurgle himself at this moment. Seems like a good reason to pick them. Anyways. Uh, we have a Nurgle team here with a... Uh, they are the rockers, though, not the rotters. Yeah, they are Nurgle team with a strength five Nurgle warriors. So, five. out of curiosity, how would you end up building this warrior? I would usually make another piece of Nurgle out of it. 
Okay, so you, would you give him a block tentacles stand firm sort of deal? Yep. Or, okay. Uh, no, that's exactly how I would build them. I might take tackle before stand firm, but that's what I would do as well. Also, Nurgle 5 and Sling, uh, Nurgle Warriors and Sling 5 is a thing. Because uh, in another division, there's another guy which has a Sling 5 Nurgle Warrior as well. But he has something else, which I think is even more disgusting. He has Strength 6 Nurgle Warrior. A Strength 6 Warrior? Oh, I think I remember yes. seeing that. That's, that's Strength crazy. 6 Nurgle Warrior. That's, uh... I guess if he wants to go full uh, Nurgle, he can give him all tentacles and just not let the other team move. <laughs> <laughs> you stand here. <laughs> You're going to enjoy it. And the thing is that you, with the uh, with the Nurgle Warrior having tentacles, you don't actually have to worry about not activating him like you do with the Beast of Nurgle, because on mm -hmm. those really stupids, sometimes you're tying up three, four players, really stupid, they all just run off. Mm -hmm. So sometimes well, I've been playing well, a little bit of Nurgle on ladder, and I've been I've played games of with the Beast where I stick them on like three, four players, they fail their tentacle rolls for five turns in a row, and I just leave them there and don't activate them. Yeah. The, one of the big learning things to take off of playing Nurgle, especially, is learning when to not activate your big guy. And your other players as well, but especially your big guy. Yeah, but also if you think about the positionals you need on a Nurgle team, it's actually a really good thing to have two of them. Like, just imagine this team. You have two uh, Nurgle Warriors, Strength 5, which are your walls, which have guard, which have block, which have tentacles, which have stand firm. Uh, then you have two Nurgle Warriors, which are more like Yellows, with Mighty Blow, uh, Block, and Claw, and Tackle. Uh, then you have your Beast of Nurgle, of course, with Stand Firm and Guard, normal stuff. And then you just got Killer Pestacles, and all of a sudden you have a very mm -hmm. scary Nurgle team. Uh, on that topic, uh, we mentioned it earlier, but this is a really well-developed team. It has all it has all the positions it probably wants right now. It has all three of its rerolls. And uh, two really of its pets. You don't really need the fourth pestigore right away, though. You, it, it makes sense <coughs> that you that you might want to develop your first three before you get to number four. I would okay. actually. And uh, like... two of these are have clear development paths already. Uh, number slime bag Daryl is clearly the carrier, and shredding mercury is clearly turning into a claw bomber. I prefer having a pestigore over a rod of simple because of region. That's fair. That's true, but the other thing you have to think about is a Pestigore, even a uh, naked one, is twice as expensive as a Rotter. And as a as a Nurgle team, you want to be able to foul. Hmm. So it might be he might want to trade off um, having a bigger bench to allow him to foul those really scary pieces mm -hmm. when he knocks them down in exchange for having that movement and horns. Uh, and, uh, is... on that topic, this team is already at the top of its, uh, at the top of the division in terms of team value, I believe. Uh, That's always going to be the case for Nurgle, mm -hmm. <coughs> Although, also speaking of that, this team is, looks to me, like I said, at the point where it might want to start investing in a stadium enhancement. And... For exactly the reasons you just spelled out, I think I'd really like to see a bribe. I the thing is about the bribe stadium for bri for teams that are already fouling a lot. I'm not sure how much I like it. The reason is is that if you're a team that's a fouling team, you're gonna foul no matter what. It doesn't matter. You're gonna foul. You're gonna take into account that sometimes you'll get sent off. Your roster will accommodate that. The thing is that when you start giving bribes to teams that normally don't foul, what happens is that you start having players that you really, really like getting fouled just because they're not risking much. There's a 1 in 6 chance that they get sent off, um, provided that they even get seen by the ref. So what can happen is that you end up getting injuries more to your better players. Yeah. The, uh, the flip side of that I, is I that... I also oh. follow this statement because I can tell you I'm a team with 330 players on the bench <laughs> and I do not like that. Okay, that that's fair enough. Just to play devil's advocate, though, the flip side of that is that you have usually you have really cheap players if you're a fouling team, and 
if you're playing against a team that's not normally a fouling team, then it's a lot easier for them to get out of position <laughs> trying to foul in the process of trying to foul you. Very true. You also, like about the Robin Game Rockets, is the fact how their Chaos Warriors, I mean, Nurgle Warriors, are getting lots of love and lots of development over other players. Oh, yes, they are. But, uh. Means we're going to see the, uh, those mm -hmm. two block Mighty Blow Chaos Warriors get their claw pretty soon. Uh, okay, <coughs> yeah. Uh, is there anything else you'd like to add before we move on? Because, uh, we're. Well. Nope. Yeah, okay. Great. We're not running behind right. time. We're exactly on time. Don't let anyone tell you otherwise. So, okay. oh, right. I guess Precisely looks like it I just rolled you. over. Um, wait, 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 wait. Let's just look at the matchups of um, next week. Oh, right. Yeah, I'll go back there quickly. Damn. I got ahead of myself. It's a bye week. The High Five and the Necromantic are going to play Organized Crime, the Ogres. Bufflepuff Heroes are going to play versus Pantheon Passes. So Gamry versus uh, Crow Elves. Mm -hmm. The Rockers are taking a bye week. Then you, Worship Chaos, are going to play versus the Chaos Warrior with Catch. The really famous Phoenix. Uh, again, I'm then pretty sure that just... Chaos Warrior died. <laughs> really? I'm pretty sure. Well, let's check that in a second. The Skull Crushers are going to get a bye week. And the Cowboy Dwarves are going to bash on King of the Cosmos' team. We have any uh, uh, Oh no, prediction? he's still there. Catch guy's still there. So um, <laughs> the game I'm going to take is the Cowboy Dwarfs versus the the Vampires, the Heroes of the Sword Coast. <laughs> and uh, I don't think I'm too contentious in predicting that the Dwarfs will probably win this game. But I think it'll be an interesting game to watch. Because uh, the Dwarfs don't have that much... They don't really have that much guard yet. So between the strength four vampires and hypnotic gaze, they could do they could well they could literally dance around the dwarves if the, if their bloodlust rolls are favorable. I think I'll take a look at the uh, Hufflepuff heroes versus Pantheon passers personally, um, just because I've recently played this matchup, and I don't. This is a really really rough matchup for Kemri unless they get some really hot uh, removals. Um, just because Proves are so fast, they're so hard to prevent from scoring, and Kemri, you really, really, really want to prevent the other person from scoring if you want to win. <laughs> I, I also had this matchup uh, last week, and guess what happened? So, it was versus High Elves on Pro Elves. If I remember the, right, you murdered a lot of Elves. Yeah, but the High Elves actually started bashing me down first. <laughs> So I had to start um, Gemini versus uh, High Elves with a few men down. So, you know, 9 or 8 Gemini players versus 11 High Elves, that's a nightmare situation you pretty much can't control anymore. Well, yeah, Kemri, uh, Kemri really, really, really suffer once their uh, players start going away. Especially mm -hmm. against anything that's more agile than them, which is pretty much everyone. Yep. Okay. Well, now this time we will move on to five, Div Five C for real, and uh, it looks like it was just recently rolled over, and I mean like within the last hour, type recently, uh, because uh, one of the matches, as I understand, was a uh, an admin game. But we'll get to that when we get to it. The first game we're looking at is the Frozen Dead North versus Jazz Poison, which was won by Underworld two to one. Finally, Jazz Poison getting a break. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. is, well, they beat the <laughs> Goblin team as well. Uh, but they did take some losses. Uh, they've got minus M movement to a Goblin, which, honestly, in, in the grand scheme of things, is not that big of a loss. And they do have one expulsion, which I believe is from Dribble Snot, who they hired. I'm not as familiar with the uh, I'm not as familiar with the Underworld team. Um, I'm not quite sure what you can normally induce with them. And 
Uh, Dribble like Snot's chainsaw. always an interesting choice. Uh, they get the bomb. I think they also get a killer piece. Not sure about that. <laughs> but yeah, having uh, uh, the Mighty Blow Claw and then Mighty Blow Claw pretty soon on his uh, princess is going to mean that he's going to have a lot of fun soon. Uh, I'm just glad I've played these guys earlier in the uh, season before they uh, got more killy. Uh, to answer your question, in terms of star players, they have a combination of Skaven and Goblin star players. Uh, I can't remember all of the ones, but I want to. S but in terms of like the cheap ones, they have the Goblin. Uh, well, they have Dribble Snot, and they have the Nubla, and I think they have the Skaven Ball and Chain. <coughs> So that means they also get a get stab. Uh, oh yeah, they definitely yeah, have, they, get they definitely have skitter as well. Skitter is always uh, mm -hmm. fun to use against elves. Uh, <laughs> so uh, with this giant claw. so it looks like Jazz Poison got more remover uh, removals despite taking fewer blocks, uh, and the ball possession is massively in the favor of the Frozen Dead North Norse. So that paints the picture to me. Of, uh, well, it looks like they got diced, really. But also, it looks like they tried to stall and were punished for it. Uh, let's see. Where was I going with this? Oh, they've just... Let's see. Yeah, the 59... So, 15 armor breaks versus the, uh, 5... With mm -hmm. the 49 blocks versus the 39. It's not really what you'd expect, given that uh, goblins are also armor 7 and necros all armor 8 and above. Mm -hmm. That being said, maybe he just wasn't rolling a lot of pals on the goblins. They, you know, It's hard to roll. It's right, hard to hurt him if you can't knock him down. That is very true. The next match is uh, going to be something which is close to somebody's heart here. Can we do it? Hello. Yes, we can. Versus Doom Anvils. Can we versus Jaws? And, uh, and the oh, Ke that's... Kepri wins 2 to 1. Zero, even. Yeah, so that was just a, uh, I'd say relatively standard matchup. It's not really good for, I wouldn't say it's an especially good matchup for uh, dwarfs this the early on. Yeah, it is not uh, because they don't have any guard or any way to deal with the game except for uphill blocking which normally at some point is going to bite you in the ass yeah he did have uh if i remember correctly he did have a couple of bad uh red dice where he had some skulls and i was able to knock him down um managed to set up a wall relatively early and to be fair the other thing is also possible because it's a 72 percent chance that the uh, dice are not going to be bad for you like, you can always get pushed, mm -hmm. so if that, that happened to me once with Troy, the guy just kept pushing me away. Yep. Yeah, and uh, I do think this is a match that gets easier for the dwarves as they get more developed and they get more Mighty Blow in particular. Well, oh. Mighty Blow and Guard. So, I've had I've played this matchup a couple of times on the ladder at higher TV, and the time that stuck out to me most, um, just for being the most unfun game for me ever was a game where it was a developed dwarf team where I was down TV about 100k and change, um, where they had a death roller and had a bribe stadium. Where the death roller had guard and all the dwarves had guard and the death roller stuck to my tomb guardians and the guard dwarves stuck to my tomb guardians and I could not block anybody and I could not move and it was not fun. <laughs> that is the dwarven dream. <laughs> <laughs> this is why I'm taking Strength 6 um, Tomb Guardians. I've had a death roll that also hanging at my feet this season already, and I simply cast them because I'm strong enough to deal with that shit. <laughs> yeah, I watched that happen, actually. That was great. Uh, so, uh, in terms of, uh, before we move on, in terms of injuries, I believe you suffered uh, two injuries on, two Semi-permanent injuries on skeletons, a, mo a move bust, which I assume you fired. I haven't checked that yet. And a misnomer. Yeah, game. he's gone. 
Yeah, so the I actually kind of wish I kept the movement bus just to see if I take more casualties this next game, just because a four movement skeleton is better than a dead skeleton. Mm -hmm. oh, but okay. uh, I already fired him. <laughs> and of course, your kicker has learned to kick. Uh, I have uh, corrected mistakes. Oh. Uh, McMacky actually played dwarves this week. Next week is playing dwarves. Yep, I said I said dwarves. <laughs> yeah, no. Sorry. <laughs> You're sick. It's okay. Just don't die on us. Yeah, like. Yeah. Uh, I yeah, I can't. I can't carry this show show on my own. And no, <laughs> no dice's creep factor is too high for just one person to counterbalance him. Uh, <laughs> anyway, uh, moving on. The next game is the Shrek All Stars versus the Royal Rumble Boys, which ended two so to one for the Nurgles. So, the only dead player is the MVP, of course, the Rotter. Um, is Ravenpool serious? He has a second block ogre already. Yeah. Has a agility ogre. Ooh. His what palm is going on. But his palm o his uh his pylon ogre did some magic because it leveled up and it rolled block, but it also got niggled this game, and that's the palmer. So, hmm. I don't know if I wonder if we're gonna see him keep on piling on as much as he does, or if, or or if uh, he's gonna decide maybe it's not worth it. I uh, mean, that being said, it's an ogre, so I think the answer is that yes, it is worth it, but it's definitely enough to give you a second thought. But to be fair, even Bo is just going to be like, yeah, hello, going to do it anyway. I guess that's true. Just <laughs> He'll just have to make sure he has enough bank left to, you know, buy a new so one be... when it eventually gets fouled to death. So yeah, this ogre is going to be really, really scary until he dies. And yep. he will die eventually. <laughs> yep, but he has a second guy in the coming. Uh, only needs two more SVP as well. Yep. Mm -hmm. This team is looking real good, even though it's an ogre team. Well, as good as an ogre team can look. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I think that this is genuinely the best performing ogre team in in Rel, if for sure. I want to say in all of Rebel, but in Rel for sure. Uh, it's not the best stunty team though, because there is a goblin team in G Man who is on fire. Uh, what? What one? So there's a goblin okay. team. Um. In... There's a uh, goblin. I think it's in G Man Four. There's a goblin team that's definitely top half the table, yeah, like... and I think it was in contention for being like one of the top four. I'm not sure it has lost yet. It it has draws for sure, but I'm not certain it has lost yet. It definitely has more wins than losses. Let's put it that way. <laughs> okay. So uh, yeah, that's amazing, and I'm hoping, all hope that Ravenpo can do something to compare to that. With his team. Uh, yeah, they even right. one thing I do have to say. They're like, when he loses with his team, he loses a bitch. Mm -hmm. Like uh, 5 big. So, so this next game was the Merry Ballers versus the Doom Anvils. And this game was actually an admin call mm -hmm. due to the Merry Ballers coach having computer <laughs> issues. Um, his computer recently broke down and he's trying to get it fixed. Um, hopefully it'll be working in time for his next week game, but for the time being, um, his, he is not able to play. So that's why that's a 1-0 mm. uh, well, win for the It's, it's sad, but it happens. It's better than him dropping, I think, so. Oh, yeah. Okay, uh, anyway, uh, we can move on to the, the real... The really crazy stuff. Say hello to my little friends versus the Grand Blue, with the elves winning five to one. Honestly, I think I know what happened here. The goblins, goblins they uh, pretty much had a great drive, did a lot of damage, and then the secret weapons got called off. Um, I watched this game, and uh, that is basically what happened. They did actually have. They started on offense, and they did have a good drive. But then they scored too early, I would argue, and the elves then managed to score five times in a row. Yep. As the elves tend to do. 
16 is to be on the wall then, so he'd be too much level twice. Uh, actually, he did level twice. I have it written down here. Uh, War Dancer leveled twice in one game. It went... Yeah, this guy right here. He took Tackle and Strip Ball off of one game. The other War Dancer also leveled up and got uh, plus mo movement. Ooh, that's nice. So something worth noting, this team is... Uh, what I consider currently my biggest threat. <laughs> We've got the same record where we're 4-0-0. Nil -nil, mm -hmm. And Wood Elves can be an absolute nightmare to play against as a slow team. Yeah, um, they're also so, early on, you don't have that, well, you actually have much mighty blow, but normally you should not have that much mighty blow, and that should be... <laughs> yeah, so this team is one that I've been watching quite closely, and I've been praying for uh, deaths and permanent injuries on. Um, unfortunately, nothing truly permanent seems to have mm. stuck. Um, if anyone can kill the uh, plus movement war dancer... I'll have nice, th nice things to say about them. <laughs> uh, well, you might be lucky next week because they do have two Miss Next games on catchers. Uh, also, before we leave, I just want to mention two quick things about the goblins. Uh, their death is just a goblin, so it's no loss of consequence. <coughs> and uh, the loony got MVP again. I don't think they have... I think they have yet to get an MVP that was not a secret weapon. If he levels, do you guys sack him? Uh, loony. if he doesn't, the loony. Um, yeah. It's if a the tough loony choice. levels and doesn't get doubles, doesn't get dirty player. He's at twenty. He's an eighty k uh, loony. Do you fire him? It, yes. Uh, pro well, if I can afford it, then I do. But I'm not sure that negative pro can afford. <laughs> he needs to save up his damn money. He doesn't have a Neville's altar yet. The thing is. On the flip side, if you do level him, you can get a blodge step, or not, a, you can get a dodge step loony, which can be fun until he inevitably gets smacked and dies. Mm hmm. I but think, I don't know, I. Bob? 80k on a player that has a huge target on his head and goes off the pitch very easily, I don't really like. Level 3 Unless bomber? Unless he gets dirty player. Level 3 bomber without doubles, I would not hesitate to fire that but with the loony you're at least getting something out of the levels you're not getting a lot it's still a rookie one is still prob is still definitely be better from a cost effective point of view but if you're trying to save your money i don't mind too much keeping a level three loony knowing that eventually he is gonna hit gonna hit the road or really let's be honest he's gonna be troll food <laughs> but anyway. the other thing that the other thing to look at it with this goblin team is that looking at it in terms of bank, is that it's got three secret weapons and a 13-player team. Which means that without bribes, those players it's, are going to... Yeah. He's going to be having mm -hmm. um, them get called off on a score. I would actually yeah. recommend that Negative Pro picks up another Goblin at the very least, so that he's going to be able to full field a full team, or once go the for, uh, go with this team, secret I weapons 15, go off. 15 Goblins, to be fair. Uh, I... As the resin stunty expert, and goblins are like my jam. Uh, I like a 14-player roster for goblins, but I really can't stress this enough. The Nuffles Altar is incredibly good for all stunty teams. And as you always, you always need I to would to take open the bench by the way, because otherwise you can't get star players. Yeah, that that's the other thing. You don't want to go above 14 so that you can always hire two star players. But in a league, you can always just trim as well. If you know you're going to be able to afford two-star players, you can just sack a no-SPP goblin. Yeah, Yeah, but then you run out of money. And you might be thinking, oh no, their goblins are cheap. No, I've been there and I've run out of money. It's cheap until a troll gets hurt, and then you are screwed for half of the league. For half of the season. <laughs> Alright, anyways, let's take a look at the next game. Yeah, let's do that. Uh, it is Pro in a Party versus the Grungy Desserts, with the Elves winning 3-1. to one. Daldicus, his uh, strategy of no reroll, uh, Mergul is... Well, he got a reroll, finally. <laughs> he, 
he did also again. he did also kill <coughs> a uh, a lion elf. So he managed, he replaced one of his uh, rodders this game. I don't know. I'm just I don't think that a zero reroll Nurgle oh. build is. I just don't think that's a very good oh. start. Actually, he killed um, two of them. Right, one of them is a was a loner. And uh, while I understand, oh, while I understand the idea of maximizing your positionals to maximize the idea of getting SPP on them, the thing is that Nurgles, Nurgle, their start, they have no block. They've got no reroll skills at all. Um, so what you're going to have happen is you're just going to randomly lose games to one and nines, or one and three um, failed pickups. And you're, there's not going to be a whole lot that you're going to be able to do about it. The other thing is, is that if you do lose players, which I was, he was unlucky enough in that he failed a GFI in his first game against me and got one of his Pestigors killed. Mm -hmm. So that Pestigor costs 80k. At start, a reroll costs 70k. Mm -hmm. He could have, that, that Pestigor that died cost as much as, one, as that one reroll that he just got. And I think by basically triple or and the thing is to get to a stable amount of rerolls as nurgle you really want to get to three but he's doubled the cost and how much mm -hmm. he needs to do that by starting with no rerolls that's the real catch i think because like i guarantee you he did not go into this expecting to win this season he went into this trying to develop for next season but what he didn't count on was the abysmal luck he has had he just hasn't got any in any casualties at all and he keeps losing the players who actually get SVP and it's just been sort of a run time for developing his uh, team but having said that he is yeah. finally starting to get the SVP on the players he wants it on so who knows maybe he'll turn it around by the end of the, end of the season it's gonna be a long ride anyway oh yes yeah. game mean, Last one is the the uh, Kenta Kentakeras Crutations. Kentakeras Crutations versus Corn Glory looks like. Yes, uh, that. Glory, a pure killer team. The li and the lizards win two to zero. <sighs> this guy is just going mighty blow claw, mighty blow claw, mighty blow, mighty blow. Yeah, so I want to take a look at the Corn Glory team. Um, and looking at it, mm -hmm. uh, the thing that pops out to me is there is no block in one in what eight level ups, eight level ups, no block, and four rerolls, four rerolls as well. Yeah, and while this guy, this guy is just saying, <laughs> I'm just going to murder you. Yeah, uh, he's doing sort of doing the Stauticus thing, except with rerolls, where he doesn't care about winning, he cares about murdering, and then he'll have a really scary team at the end of the season once he's murdered everyone. Something I find interesting, he's got two naked tackle beastmen, and I don't know how much I like that. Yeah, um, I would have, if you are going this sort of a build, I would just go Mighty Blow on everybody because, well, I sort of get the notion. You want to get Mighty Blow on everybody so they can start leveling faster with punching, mm -hmm. and they're all Agility 3 anyway, so they're going to score at some point in their lives anyway. Chaos Warriors, all beastmen, both can score relatively well, so, you know... Normally, I would agree, everybody, yeah. but bad. in a division with three stunty teams and two elves, I think, <laughs> taking a couple tackle early on makes a lot of sense to me. Yeah, you know what is better than? It's better than that you take those Mighty Blow Claw guys and that you turn those into uh, Mighty Blow Tackle guys. The thing You're not wrong. The thing that I don't like about having the two tackle... Well, I do get that tackle is a little bit more effective against Stunty. It prevents the dodging out. But block. Switch one of those to block or wrestle. You still get the ability to knock them, knock down Stunties. Wrestle gives you the ability to knock down Blodgers. Yeah, but and I... You can then build say, him into a, a sacking piece. And it makes your makes your uh, block safer. If I build a uh, Chaos team, I don't like getting block on my Killer Beastman. I only like getting block on my ball carrying or you know, uh, sacking or wrestling Beastman. So generally not getting blocked early on Beastman is something I get, 
but I would mm. get block early on Chaos Warriors at first. I would at least in the beginning get two block Chaos Warriors. So you at least have some block going, but I would get them on the Warriors rather than the Beasts. The other thing about block or wrestle is that it also helps, besides just not, uh, besides just being able to knock down other players easier, it also keeps your players alive. Um, you don't really notice it. Um, the thing is, is that people are going to generally blitz the players that they have the highest chance of removing. Yep. If you've got a bunch of people without block and then a guy with block, <laughs> the guy with block is probably not going to be the one blitzed unless he poses an exceptional threat to the team like you're Amazon team or something, in which case you really want to get that one guy that can knock you down on both downs off the field. Hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, so I don't know. I, I, I see where he's, what he's thinking with this, where he's just going, kill, chaos maximum kill, I'm going to win by removing your team. Uh, um, I guess what also would have been smart with these level ups is having the two killers with Mighty Blow and Claw, and then just having three Wrestle Beastmen. And having the Chaos Warrior at Mighty Blow, and the one in which is leveled up also giving it Mighty Blow, and just play it like that. Yeah, I would not have hated that. Um, the last thing that catches my eye is that he has a level 2 stadium, so maybe we'll see an enhancement here sooner rather than later. Uh, it's gonna be Granite Stadium. I, like, I could see Bribe on Chaos. If he really wants I to go know. all in on the murder. I don't play it. I don't Without. think Chaos really benefits uh, from Bribe very much. Like, the the thing is, with a Bribe Stadium as Chaos, you've got your Claw Palmers. To, your Claw Palmers going are going to be palming, that's yeah, and going they're going to be on the fight. ground. It's going to invite <laughs> the other player to basically stomp even harder. Okay, that's that's true. Maybe, maybe not the best idea. Uh, okay. Um, I also wanted to mention quickly, before we transition to the our next team, because we sort of jumped in there, uh, on the Lizards, they did get a plus movement on a skink from that their last game. But uh, we're sort of past that stage now. No, uh, the team I want to look at is... Oh, you know what? I said that we hadn't done this, but it's because I had it reserved for me. Sorry, I didn't look at my notes properly. <laughs> the team's, uh, team I'm looking at is the Iron Sforge. <coughs> just, all right just, a, just a little window into the behind the scenes right there um <laughs> so this is a dwarf team uh i sort of like how it looks they have yeah. a blodge blitzer they're going guard first on their long beards and they have a palmer troll slayer and both oh, runners have block slayer that palmer was an absolute menace <laughs> So, uh, they're got, uh, quite a few removals last game. It was, uh, unfortunate. <laughs> they also, do... he has a, he has a blotch blitzer. Uh, mm. yay or nay? Um, I love it because it just, you keep giving it more stuff and it just keeps getting better. Um, now, I'd build him... dodge is not good I... on every dwarf, but it is good on a blitzers and runners. Because they can make full use of the, of the dodge. So and... what I the way, so I would build that blitzer to be a blodge guard stand firm piece. Uh, that um, that is exactly what I would do as well. I would take guard next, and then I would take stand firm after that, uh, and I would do it in that order because you want guard on as many players as possible, and you especially want some guard on mobile players, and that's what your blitzers are for. No, I actually do like that sentiment, and I completely agree, but there is also another school of thinking. And that's getting jump up, Mighty Blow, and finally gone. Um, that's understandable, I... but the thing is, as dwarves, you're probably already going to be building your two Troll Slayers to be Palmers. Yeah. And I don't know if having three of them is really necessary. That's the thing. The thing I've, is, uh, I've with, seen with Palmers, you need to have at least one or two on your team. But that's also like where it becomes uh, detrimental. Like after you've had your second pomber, usually that's enough. Mm -hmm. If you really want to go crazy, though, four pombers is what you can get <laughs> at max before it gets. Low. I have seen people argue to to, to turn blitters into pommers and use troll slayers for other things, <laughs> but I honestly don't agree with that sen sentiment. The whole thinking behind there is real is just because oh no, troll slayers have eight armor. People are going to go all over them. It doesn't matter. Most Palmers have eight armor, and they don't have thick skull e nope. either. To say nothing uh, of nine other dwarves surrounding them with guard. 
The sentiment is that this is our agility tree, so jump up actually works on a 2 plus rather than a 3 plus. That is true. Um, but I honestly, I don't, you don't take jump up on dwarves because you want to block people from the ground. I, I'd say you don't take jump up on dwarves first skill. Like, you don't take jump up first skill on pretty much any player. It delays their, uh, it de delays yeah. their growth far too much. So you could, like while I understand the idea there. behind taking a jump up blitzer, I wouldn't take it unless he already had at least mighty blow. That's the other thing as well. Um, there is also <laughs> an argument. There is also an argument for diving tackle on dwarves, but I don't like that on blitzers. I like it on literally every other dwarf, but not blitzers. And like and that's days. for the and that's sort of for the reasons I already said. Blizzards are better if you set them up so that they can take more hits and while also being mo as mobile as possible. And jump up doesn't really facilitate that. Now, if there was a second double, then I would t look at jump up because jump up on a blood stand firm player is um, not jump up, sorry, but uh, diving tackle on a blood stand firm is amazing because they can't knock you down and they can't run away. Stand firm's a skill that I don't think uh, you see as much as you should. It's a very, very strong skill. Um, but it's really not... You can't really take it until late in development. Mm, dwarves can take it pretty early, honestly. I, I would like guess a... You can do a second level up stand firm on longbeards, and it works. You don't want to do it on every longbeard, but on a few, sure. The good old three guard stand firm on the line. Mm hmm exactly. Uh, the other interesting thing here, I think, is the, that the runners both went block. I'm not really a fan of this, because the runner is really your only player who can go wrestle. Uh, I think we sort of mentioned that earlier, and it's sort of, it feels like a missed opportunity to not have one as a wrestler. But not only that, like, if you're not using a runner for that, you don't need two runners. Uh, I would kind of disagree. If you want a hundred percent block, I think. I mean, I think. So the reason. <laughs> I think. So are there's. Okay, no, go okay. on. So the reason that I see taking block on the runner is, you've got two runners. They're both going to be in your backfield. Both of them are able to receive the ball depending on which side it goes to. You want to be able to pick up the ball on a dwarf. With sure hands. But you also want to make sure that he doesn't fall down on both down. So you give him block. The wrestle, while I understand the idea of, ma of developing him to be more like a sacker than your um, other runner, I just find that having wrestle sure hands to be a bit of a waste. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. I, can, uh, I understand, though, that that the runners are pretty much going to be the only dwarves that ever take wrestle. This is if you're going to take wrestle at all. Dwarf teams go 1-1, one, one, like one second, mm -hmm. one get yes. and, the uh, other thing is what The other thing is that on runners, you want to be able to take doubles and stat-ups. So you want to be able to get an agility 4 runner, you want to be able to get a movement 7 runner, you want to be able to get a blodge runner. That, there's also one skill that gave me teams and dwarf teams do not get a lot, which I actually have had in the past. Which has won me games. Are you going to say kickoff returns? Hail Mary, Hail Mary pass. pass. Oh. Yeah, no. Uh, with two runners who are carrying the ball, what you, you probably do is you develop one as a dedicated carrier and one as someone who can actually do things with the ball. Yeah, but, I, but I've had a situation where my one of my runners, the carrier, was at the infield of the enemy and my other one, my second, was at my infield and the mm -hmm. enemy was at my infield. I was able to pop the ball free, pick it up, hold it for a turn, and then just say how many pass over to the other runner and score. <laughs> of course, the one problem with that argument is that if you can take that hand layer pass and put it on the on the sacker. Still, it's definitely something to think about. Yeah. Uh, now, I think we have one more team to look at, which... We are running a little bit behind, so we'll just do it quickly. Uh, which team was that again? I don't know. 
my brain isn't working right now, so... Oh. Okay. Well, you know... We've already taken, we we've did... taken a look at ten coins. We've taken a look at... Uh, the Iron's Forge. Well, you know, we did two for 5B, so we can do two for this one as well. That's fine. We'll just jump into looking at next week's games quickly. All right. So let's see. So we've got uh, Frozen Dead North versus the Royal Rumble Boys. This is the Necro team versus one of the two Nurgle teams in the division. And the Royal Rumble Boys, I believe, is the higher TV one. Um, that does have more rerolls. Um, they have a mighty blow claw warrior. Yes, yeah, so they're uh, they're getting they're more developed and substantially more scary. Um, also, any I predictions like, on this? I like how jo uh, Shawn Michaels has uh, an excellent movement, so he's more agile, like in real life. And I like <laughs> how Rey Mysterio is good in wrestling. <laughs> um, I think the hmm, I think the Norths definitely have the advantage in this game, but the Royal Rumble boys are looking pretty good. So it's hard to say. It's for actually sure. the uh, Frozen Dead North is actually a Necro team. Oh, I was looking at the wrong damn team. Okay, in that case, in that case, it's a little bit different. Uh. Actually, no, I think it's it's pretty much the same. Necro has the advantage here, but again, the Royal Rumble boys are looking pretty good, so it's a little hard to say. Um, if their positioning is not solid, then the Necro will just run around them. But with solid positioning and a little luck, they could take a surprise win, or at least draw the game. I'm going to predict that A-Grain takes this. Just looking at... I've uh, watched both the coaches play... Um, and I've looked at both of their teams, and I do think that uh, Agrain's team, I think that he's going to be able to take it, though I wouldn't be too surprised if there was a draw. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, staying true to form, the team I, or the game I'm looking at is Shrek All-Stars versus Korn's Glory, because I'm looking at this game and I'm thinking, if the ogres don't get oh murdered, gosh. they have a real chance of actually winning this game. Oh my god! As we this discussed, is going to be amazing. Corn's Glory is a team that's all about murdering. They don't really touch the ball all that much. So the ogres have a chance of scoring and then not being scored on in return if the they is, don't uh, get murdered. I don't the think star the... Player, the star player is not in the game, though. Like, what's gonna ogre this, this next game? I, I don't think that this matchup's actually very good for the ogres. He's got two Claw Mighty Blow Beastmen. Yep. That doesn't take... That's not that hard to set up two die on uh, ogres with strength four blitzes. It's gonna be a bloodbath anyway, so it's worth watching in my book. Yeah. I'm not saying it's a good... I'm not saying the Avengers is in the ogres. I'm saying they have a chance. And I'm saying it'll be an interesting game. I guess we'll see how the uh, injury dice go. Plus, I just cannot stop rooting for the stunty teams. <laughs> so, uh... uh well, uh, I will say... Let's look at the game, throw in a party first, say hello to my little friends. I think we sort of saw this game this week, where we sort of know what happens with the el elves meet goblins. Yeah, but I mean, this might be fun because uh, Soul has more um, positionals in this team. But all of them seem to get uh, stat bust left and right, and he's going to face goblins now, so this might be fun as well. Mm hmm. That, that's true. And uh, while I. These goblins. Also, uh, if you can give the ball to the Chainsaw Guy and do a touchdown with him, it gets a lot of <laughs> I mean, I did see a bomber touchdown the other day. It wasn't from Negative Pro, but it was a goblin team in the Rebel. Alternatively, we can also see a goblin passing play. Looney pass towards another goblin. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, though. Uh, I My expectation in my head is that the elves will probably have a route. Or, no, that's the wrong word. No, the elves will probably do quite well, but... If the goblins have any say, it will be one hell of a pyrrhic victory. 
Yeah, they, we'll see how they, it goes. They should be able to get with their TV, get Nobla, and to get a um, fungus. Hmm. Hmm. What, uh, what is the TV difference there, actually, anyway? Uh, so... They might be, it's be able to be afford a uh, Ripper. Almost 400 TV uh, difference. I... As the Goblin player... That could be Ripper you and three bribes. How much is Ripper? Isn't Ripper like a... Uh, 270. He's 270. You could see Ripper and two bribes. Three I don't bribes know. The if thing you mind, is, don't mind paying out a bank. thing I is, I'm not sure... Them. How effective Ripper is going to be yeah. against elves? This is the thing. I like to have a fanatic or a fungus in this case with Mighty Blow on the line because he's going to get three dices and he's going to be able to Mighty mm. Blow those corpses on the floor. I don't think Mighty Blow applies to a prone player, so only blocks. Uh, doesn't it? I'm um, pretty sure it's only blocks. No, it's. With the, it's different with the uh, ball and chain. It mighty blow counts because you're making a yeah, block does... even if they're on the ground. It's it's not actually a foul. He can actually block corpses, which is really special. Mm -hmm. Hmm. So he can like uh, punch somebody down, punch another person down, and then punch the corpse, punch the other corpse. He can get like four or five blocks in a turn, and he can like remove stuff, you know, four or five elves in a turn, potentially. I, I mean... don't know. The, the NAF, so according to the NAF, if a player moves into a prone player and pushes them backwards, they may not use Mighty Blow. Oh, okay. So, I guess it depends on how uh, cyanide, cyanide implant. Yeah, I guess so. Um, My mistake, then. I, I think I actually used Mighty Blow already once with a loony on the floor. Hmm, interesting. Hmm. Okay. So, uh, I think we're done now. All right. Not too much over time. So, uh... Anything else? Our special guest of the evening still wants to add to this. Mm-hmm. Uh, not like, particularly. Like a, like, like a taunt towards your division, like, I'm going to win, I'm going to go to the Super Bowl or something, or... Oh, no, that's how you, that's how you actually end up getting yourself cursed, so... Oh, no. you've learned the, <laughs> you have learned the, the lesson of Iron Master... <laughs> You mean Iron Master, Chaos Cup, Winner of Cups, or something? Yes. <laughs> yeah. That guy. Uh, okay. I don't know. Uh, on that note, I believe we're done. So join us ne next week when hopefully we're all a lot less sick. Yeah, well. Take care, <laughs> I can't help it, but it's going to be fine. Good luck in your right. games. May yeah, all your casualties be deaths. And all your dice be pals. <laughs> That's something I'm going to hope for tonight because I'm facing rats. <laughs> <laughs>